Right. Now we're going to go back to the material that's caused all the hullabaloo in the last well, about month or so. Uh, when back <laughs> May the 19th, my good friend Shebir Ali finally admitted after, what, how many years have we debated on this? Finally admitted that there was more than one Quran, that there were many different dialects, as he kept on saying, many different Girat or Ahruf. That was on May 19th. He was doing a lecture for the Ramadan series that he does every year. Didn't know how explosive that was. And I think the reason why is because he's never said this before. And here's what's out to me. How is it after all these years of all the debates I've had with him, all the time he's always said there's only one Quran, only one Quran. He's always made that known. He has never ventured right or left on that. And then suddenly on May 19th, a little over a month ago, he finally admits, well, actually, no, there are a number of different Qurans that don't agree, that don't have the same writings, that do have different dots and do have different vowels, and they do differ say different things as a result. So why, why suddenly has he admitted that in just this year, 2020, when he never admitted that back in the 1900s, he never admitted that in all the six debates that I've ever had with him on the Quran and the Bible, now he's admitting that. What's going on? What's going on? And we need to get back and we need to understand this, uh, because this was really brought to the fore on June the 8th, when uh, Muhammad Hijab <clears throat> had that infamous interview with Yasser Qadi where he asked him this very thing. What about these Kirat? What about these different readings? How is it you can have one Quran and yet have not just not two? Up to 30 different readings, different ways of reading the same text. 30 different Qurans. 30 different Qurans. Seven which were the first official, made uh, official by Ibn Mujahid in 936. Another three that were added in 1429 by al Jazari. And then each of those 7 plus 3 makes 10. Each of those 10 had two students or two transmitters that came after. Who now, if you add the 20 plus the 10, you now have 30 official Gira, 30 official different Qurans. And when Muhammad Hijab held that blank piece of paper, well, he pretended he had a blank piece of paper. What are you going to write on this, he said. What are you going to write? Is it going to be the Kaloon? Is it going to be the Hafs? Is it going to be the Wash? Is it going to be the Alduri? Which one of the now 30 that we, that you, the you scholars, you're the ones who have uh, introduced this, you're the ones who have claimed and have known about this for over a thousand years, which one are you going to put? Which one are you going to write? And you remember, we remember that infamous interview where Yasar Qadi says, this is not something you bring into the open. This is not something we discuss on camera. And in just 20 minutes and over and over again for 25 to 26 minutes, he tried to remonstrate against our good friend, Muhammad Hijab, who really wanted an answer, who really wanted an answer. So this is what we're going to get into now, and this is what we need to move into. I talked about this in the film that, uh, that I gave there in London back on September 2019. So let's go in and let's unpack what we mean by this. Let's help you understand why this is so significant and why also this is so damaging. All right, so back to the film. Now let's get to the diacritical variants, and these are probably the ones that caused the Muslims the most anger when we introduced them to three years ago here in London. What do we mean by diacritical variants? Except for two of you, the rest of you don't know what I'm talking about. So let's help you and unpack it so we can see what's going on. Take a look at those, those two manuscripts. Can you notice there's no dots above and below the lines, right? That is straight Razm consonantal text. The consonantal text is what is known as Razm in Arabic. That's the Samarkand manuscript, which is in Tashkent. Over here is the Sana manuscript, which is in Yemen. Both of these are 8th century documents. And you can see there's no vowels, there's no curlicue for the Dhamma, there's no line at the top for the Qatta, and there's no line below for the Kasra, the U, the A, uh, and the E sound. There's three vowels in Arabic with the long vowels as well. That's why when you look at these, it, you, how do you know what you're reading? You can't read it, and that's why, from the very beginning, you can see it's, it's a very uh, inexact text. So, in Arabic, as I said earlier, there are 28 letters. Right, so what's going on here? Well, and this is something that I'm getting lots of emails from, so let me just back up before I move into these letters. I, I, listen, I can understand an awful lot of you do not understand Arabic. I, I'm not going to sit there and just do a, an Arab, Arabic lesson, but... 
the 28 letters that I'm going to introduce now are modern standard Arabic. This is what they use today, all right? Uh, this is the confusion I think most people have. Back in the 7th century, they didn't have these 28 letters. I've now I've tried to find out how many they existed, and I've been getting different reports. Uh, let's just go with 16. We do know at least 16 letters, maybe a, a few, maybe a little fewer than that. But 16 letters existed at the time of Uthman, at the time of Muhammad, at the time of the seventh century, uh, from what, from the Arabic we're getting. Now it's 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 fluid. We cannot I cannot be definitive on that. That's as far as I'm going to do. Save today. So at least 16 letters. That needed that, but these letters had many more different. They had many more different words, different variations of words, and that's why it was obvious to the readers that the context suggested many other words existed in those groupings of three letters at a time, because that's what most Arabic words are always at the base are made up of three letters, and that's why they needed to start adding different dots, and these are the dots above and below the lines. These are the diacritical dots, and. Uh, Later on, uh, in the this was done. Now there were some dots there in the seventh century. I'm not saying there are no dots because we do have examples of inscriptions that have some dots in them. Whether they were added later, we don't know. But let's just go ahead and say that there were some dots. But this was not well known, and this was not standardized, and that's why uh, the the two manuscripts, the Samarkand and the Sana manuscript that I showed, don't have dots in them at all. Uh, and the ones that start to have dots, more than likely, like the Tokapi, they're in a different color and they were added at a, a different date, a later date. So th without these dots and without these vowels, there are so many different ways that you can read the same sentence or read the same verse. And that's why dots needed to be added. And so they were starting to be standardized in about the mid to late 8th century. So by the late 8th century, they had now standardized, they had dots. Uh, as I'm going to show you, dots above and below the lines. And once these dots were there, then they could start coming up with many different variants, or sorry, many different variations of words. That's the problem. Uh, which dots are you going to put? Once you invent the dots, you need to know which go up where. So let's go back to the lecture and see what they came up with. So in Arabic, as I said earlier, there are 28 letters. But six of the letters are unique. The Aleph, the Kaf, the Lam, the Mim, the Ha, and the Wow. Those are the six letters that don't need any dots. They always remain the same regardless of where they're found in the word. The other 22 all need dots. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at that smiley face. One smiley face. You put one dot above it, it's a Nun. Two dots above it, it becomes a Ta. Three dots above it, it becomes a Tha. That same smiley face, if you put one dot below it, becomes a ba. Two dots below it, it becomes a ya. Which means you can get five different letters with just one smiley face. Na, ta, tha, ba, ya. Can you see the dilemma? How, therefore, can you read when uh, Arabic unless you have the dots? If you put three of those smiley faces together, one after another, you can get 19 different words depending on where you put the dots. Now, Al-Fadi says he can actually get 31 different words, but that's because he knows Arabic so much better than the rest of us from Saudi Arabia. Why is that important? Well, this is where the Kirat and Ahruf come into being. Does, does anybody know what I'm talking about when I say Kirat and Ahruf? These are the diacritical differences. Because of the fact that there are so many diacritical possibilities to put those dots in anywhere, well, you can imagine that there's going to be whole schools of differences depending on what reading you're going to give. And when you hear about the readings, they're talking about this. So in the 8th and 9th century, you had different schools that were creating completely different Qurans with different readings, and here they are. These are just 26 of the 32 we now have here in London. We've gone around the world and we've now found them. Hatuntash is the one that's done this. Hatuntash, she has found them in Morocco, she's found them in Jordan, she's found them in Yemen. Just those three countries she's come up with now, it's 32. Well, I'm even behind times. So you have to give an awful lot of credit to Hatuntash for the great work she has done. But I want to show you these because it's good that you at least see the 26 that we were introducing, that we did introduce back in 
2016. So I'm going to go ahead and show you these 26 one at a time uh, so you get the idea. These We're not just talking about pieces of paper. We're not just talking about scraps here and there. These are actual complete Qurans. Every one of them are complete Qurans and every one of them is in Arabic. So let's go look at them. So we have Al-Susi first and then we have Abid Jafar. Then we move over to Yakub. From there, we go to Duri, Abi Amr al Basri, then Ibn Amr, and there, Khalaf al Asher. Excuse me, my Arabic. I know I'm desecrating the language, but then that's always the case when you're a foreigner. Al Light Ibn Khalid, Warsh, that's the first Warsh. This is the Al Azraq way. Then you have the Warsh al Asbahani way. Then you have Ibn Jamaz. Duri again, Abi Amr al Ala, Khalaf al Chatapea way, and then you have Al Kisai. Here you have Shoba ibn Ayan ibn Salem al Asid al Nahshali al Kufi. Here you have Al Iman ab al ibn Khatir. From there you have Isham ibn Amir al Bazi again. Khalaf, Shokba, once again. And here you al Imam Ibn Amir al Damaski from Damascus. Kalun al Shamia, Ibn Kathir. Warsh, once again. Khraw, Shokba, once again. And we end with Kalun. So those are the 26 that we held up there in 2016. Hatun has now found 37. Of the 30 that are official, the first seven which belong, which were then made authoritative by Ibn Mujahid in 936 or between 916 and 936, that's the 10th century. Then you had three that were added to those seven by Al-Jazadi in 1429. And then you had your transmitters, two of each from H1 of the first seven plus three, which is 10. So that makes 20 transmitters. You look at the 20 transmitters plus the seven plus the three, and you get 30 official Qur'ans, 30 official different Gira'at variations. You're looking at 26 in front of you. Can you then understand why this has caused so much consternation in the Muslim world? Now, you'll notice that uh, the ones that I have just put up there, these are not complete, obviously, because there are 30. These are the 30 official ones that are, are now uh, considered by scholars to be those that are chosen, the 7 plus the 3, as I said, and the 20. She had 26 that she had been able to collect. That's Hatun back in 2016. Uh, you will have heard Warsh more than once. You will have had heard Shoba or Shuba more than once. Uh, also Kalun more than once, and also even Kathir. Fascinating, because they are different ones of the same name. The one you didn't hear, of course, is the Hafs, this one here, the Hafs. And uh, Khatu now has seven different Hafs. So this is the one that was finally chosen. That's not in the list that she put up there, because every one of those are different from this one, this one, the one that was chosen in the last century. Let me just show you a picture of the seven right here. Can you see, this is not really well known yet, and it's not really well documented yet. Since 2016, she has found another 11. So she's up to 37 different ones. And so we will need to go putting those up and start introducing them. And I'm Hatun's going to be doing that on her channel, uh, or she may have already uh, come to think of it. But can you see then why we're unlocking these now? we do need to go back and see where these 30 came from. So let's go back to the lecture and let's continue. Pick it up from there. Now, every one of these that come from five different cities, those are the five cities, Mecca, Medina, Damascus, Kufa, and Basra. These five cities in the 9th and 10th century, especially late 8th century, 9th and 10th century, they were coming up with so many different variations of the Quran, depending on where the dots were, that they each became, they each had their own Quran, and they each heart starred their own schools. And if you look at these 
brown areas, these brown clotted areas, you can see Al-Bazi there had 1,054 differences from the Quran that we use today. Kalum had 1,700 differences. Hisham had 1,300 differences. Come on down to Abu al-Harith, and he had 5,000 differences. I've just looked at 23 of these Qurans, and we've already found 93,000 differences. Just by looking at 23, these are all Arabic Qurans. The differences are all in the diacritical marks and in the vowelization, but in primary, the diacritical marks. And that's why when Muslims are talking about this, they're talking, usually when they're talking about different Qurans, they're talking about the Qirats. And what most Muslims will say, these are all the same. The problem is there is one that was chosen because there, since there are so many differences, they had to come up with one canonical version and they came up with this man right here, Hafs. Hafs is the one that was chosen, but look when he died, 796. So he died in the late eighth century. His Quran is 144 years after Muhammad. Does that bother any of you? It gets worse. Let's continue on. When you look at the examples of these variants, most Muslims will say they don't make any difference, and they'll usually use this example. This is the one they always use in chapter 1, verse 4, where on the side huffs here, you have Maliki, the owner of the day, versus Maliki, which is the king. Well, it could be the only owner of the day, or it could be the king of the day of recompense. The king is the owner. So therefore, there's no difference. On face value, I would agree. But that's not what we're finding in other ones. Here's another one in chapter 3, verse 146. You have Katala on the left, and over here with Warsh, which is very popular in northern Africa, you have Kutila, were killed. So, and how many prophets fought versus and how many prophets were killed? Well, if I was a prophet, I would rather fight than be killed. So this would have a huge significance to me if I were one of them. Here you have another example, Surah 38, Ayah 45, where you have Ibadana, Dagger Aleph is added. And in this one, there is no Dagger Aleph. It's the Abdana. Abdana, no Dagger Aleph. One is slaves, plural, the other is slave. And remember our slaves, Ibrahim, Isaac, and Yaqub. Well, obviously, that should be a, a plural, so Hafs has it correct. Al Bazi has slave, and yet he's talking about owner. So you can see it doesn't even agree with the subject. So you, need, you can see that there is a grammatical error built into that. Surah 43, Ayah 19, you have Ibadu on the left, you have Ra Inda on the right. One says slaves on the left, the other says in the presence. So, and they make the angels who are slaves of the beneficent, or the, uh, according to Ra, it's and they make angels who are in the presence of the beneficent females. Now, two problems. Are the angels slaves of Allah or simply in the presence of Allah? Number two, is it the slaves or those in Allah's presence who will be made females? If I were an angel, I would prefer being called in God's presence rather than his slave. And if I were an angel being a male, I would prefer if only the slaves were made females, were not made females, thank you. So can you see this does have theological differences and each one of these could be a theological th a th a treatise right there. Sorry, a PhD thesis. You can unpack these and we have found 93,000 of these. I'm just showing you one or two just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Chapter 46, verse 15. Isanan, doing good, versus Aduri's rendition, which is Husnan, beauty. And we have joined on man doing good to his parents. Versus, and we have enjoined on man beauty to his parents. Are men to, supposed to be good or are we beautiful to our parents? Uh, as a parent, I have three sons. I would prefer my sons being good rather than just be good looking. 98 verse 6, Bareyati versus Albareati. One is creatures, the other is the innocent. So here we're talking about polytheists who will be in hell, abiding eternally there, and those are the worst of creatures versus on this side, the people of the scripture, that's us, the polytheists, will be in the fire of hell, abiding eternally there, and those are the worst of the innocent. So are we Christians the worst of creatures or are we innocent? Well, I would prefer to go with Warsh on this one because I'm a Christian, I would rather be innocent rather than being a polytheist in hell. Can you see how this has huge theological differences? So how can they say that this doesn't even change anything? But hold on a minute, Muslims have never been shown this. So we took these down, just 26 of these down, when was it, Sarah, was it 2016, right? So three years ago. Were you there on the day? Oh, you missed it. I'm gonna show you what happened when we took these down to Speaker's Corner. There is only one Quran, right? And that every Quran in the world is the same. That's what you've been told. 
You have been told a lie! You run away from two! Okay, so there are two Qurans today, right? Two! More than two Qurans! More than two! Three Qurans! More than three Qurans! More than three! Four Qurans! There are approximately 26 of the Qurans! 26 different Qurans! The prophets fought, but by the time you get the prophets, they were killed! That is a huge attention. Your faces! Muslim people! Your faces! Come here! Come! 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 Occurrence for the Muslims that were there, as you can see, they did not like what they saw. They did not uh, like what they heard. Uh, they tried to grab the uh, the papers that we had, doing a comparison from our hands. Uh, they even jostled our cameraman. And then at the end, did you notice there was a tall man? That is Muhammad Hijab. That's he. That's saying, "Come on, pull away. Come away. Don't listen." He didn't want them to see what they were seeing and he didn't want them to hear what we were saying. It was obvious to him that he did not want them to see this and or hear it. And it looks like that was four years ago. It looks like he had a crisis of faith because it was this very thing that we were introducing at the Quran, which he then asked of Yasser Qadi back on June 8th, a month ago, proving that he had not come to terms with it. In four years, he hadn't been come to terms. Now, he's very well known on the internet there uh, in the YouTube. He, I think he has over 200,000 subscribers. Very popular on YouTube, very popular on the internet. But if he cannot come up with an answer, and Yasser Qadi over here in the West cannot come up with an answer, can you see the difficulty, the difficulty they're having? Now, it was fascinating because back there in 2016, that wasn't the only time that I just showed you that we took those Qurans, those 26, only 26 down to Speaker's Corner. Uh, we did it two more times there in August of 2016. The third time we took it down, we almost did not leave. The Muslims were so upset, so upset with us that they tried to put their block us. They tried to put their bodies in front of us. You can get see if you go back a few weeks uh, on Fander Films. I've got it up there. You can go look at the film of what happened. They tried to grab the the bag from my hand, broke the strap, and they were, followed us out all the way to the street because they did not want us to leave with those Qurans. They did not want the world to know this. Little did they know that those Qurans you can buy almost anywhere. If Khatun was able to buy those Qurans, those were her Qurans in three different countries from people that have gone there and bought them for her. They don't cost that much. You can still get them today. Uh, they're available all over the Arab-speaking world. How did they think by simply grabbing them from us there at Speaker's Corner that they could somehow censor this problem for the rest of the world. Remember, when Muslims don't like something, they either burn it or they throw it into a river or they try to hide it under a bed or, in this case, try to grab it from those people who have it. These are any way they can to try to censor, to try to sh shut down this debate. And this shows me that Muslims have not yet come to term with these different Qurans. As long as I said earlier, as long as I've known Shabir Ali, he's always only ever talked about one Quran. As long as I've heard any Muslim, they've only ever talked about one Quran. It's only now, in the last month and a half, that they are finally admitting that there are more than one Qurans, and now they're moving to a whole other narrative, being pushed into a corner, coming with the fact that these are now out in the open, and we have them, and we're going to continue to show them, and we're going to show you just how many differences there are between them. We're going to 
uh, suggests that uh, Muslims need to come up with a better narrative. Because the narrative they come up with now is what Shabir Ali introduced about a month and a half ago, and that is, okay, okay, so we have many different Qurans, but they don't have any difference in doctrine, no difference in belief, and no difference in practice. Those are the three things he keeps saying. Ad nausea, without thinking through, he's only looked at four or five. Remember, we've only put up those four or five that I just showed you just now. That's all we've ever gone public with in these uh, these type of public uh, YouTube channels. Huttoon's team there in Britain and around the world, Huttoon's team, has found 93,000 of these. We've only shown four or five. Shabin Ali has been really confronting this one that we found on chapter 98, verse 6, and he's come up with video after video trying to shut that down. Al-Fadi has just run circles around him because Al-Fadi knows the Arabic. Al-Fadi, that's his native tongue. He knows the grammar, and he can say, listen, if you want to just get caught, caught up with just chapter 98, verse 6, we've got a, another 93,000 that we'd like to show you. <laughs> there's an awful lot yet to do. But there's something more damaging than this. The fact that Muslims have never admitted this, the fact that the Quran itself makes this claim that it is eternal, the fact that it makes the, cl the claim in chapter 10, verse 15, in chapter 15, verse 9, and in chapter 18, verse 27, that Allah preserves the Quran, that God would not let it be corrupted, that he guards it over and over again. It says he guards it. If that were so, then what does it say about Allah's preservation? What does it say about his guarding? What does it say about his ability to protect his word from corruption? If you have now, not just one, not just two, but as many as 30, we've got 26, we're up to 37. Looks like there's an awful lot of even doubles on the ones we do have. I would suggest that Muslims come up with a better narrative or just stop saying this and admit that the Quran is wrong. The Quran cannot be preserved eternally and it did not come. The Quran that we have today is not the one that was from Muhammad, is not the one that is from Uthman. It's not even the one that existed in the 7th century or the 8th century. We're going to leave that there for now. It's obvious that Muhammad Hijab has a, has a crisis of faith. It's obvious that Yasir Qadi had a crisis of faith. What we're going to do next, and in my next video, I'm going to show you that even these 30 Qurans, different Qirat, different Ahrus, they are not from Muhammad at all. They do not come from the same time that Muhammad lived, or even the same century. That's for the next video. Listen, this has been Jay, trying to un help you unpack this whole problem with Kira and Ahruf. I hope uh, you now understand why these are different, why these are causing so much damage, and why Muslims have something that we don't have. See, we don't have this problem with the Bible, uh, that claim. That is not something that we have claimed that it is eternal or uh, that it was sent down to one man over a period of 22 years, we would never make those two claims. We do know that the Bible was, yes, complete when it's original form. We don't have the origins, original ones. We don't have the original manuscripts, but we do have, what, over 5,000, uh, over 5,000, three to 400 Greek manuscripts. We have 10,000 Latin Vulgates. We have 9,000 in a, about 11 different languages, and we can, so we're we have about 24,000 manuscripts we can look at. And that's why we know if where there are changes. We know where the changes have come in. We even know when they come in. And we are very transparent about it. We don't sit and, and, and berate the world whenever they find these variants. We've known the variants. We tell the people right there in the Bible. You can see Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 20. There is a variant there that is not found in the earliest Greek manuscripts. So we're quite transparent. And because we do understand that these were written by men, yes, and we also know that if they're written by men, there are many different styles of writing. So we have four different uh, testimonies of the uh, life teaching of Jesus Christ from the last three years of his life from four different perspectives, using four different sets of idiomatic expressions. So we don't have a difficulty with that. We don't just say there's just one testimony of Jesus Christ. We know there's four. And two of them, Matthew and John, they both were with Jesus Christ for the last three years. Matthew and John were right there. They saw what he did. They heard what he said. And they wrote down what they saw and heard. So those are eyewitness accounts. The other two got it from the eyewitness accounts. That's why we know that they were all written within 30 to 60 years of Christ's death, within the first century they were first written. Now, 
if we were trying, if we were saying that we have more than four, and we were saying that well, actually they weren't written within the first century, can you imagine how we would defend this? If we today had what Islam is now admitting, what the Yasar Qadis and the Shabir Alis are now admitting, that means we would have about 30 different testimonies of what Jesus said and did. Over 30. And as you're going to find in the next video, and they are not even from the same century that Jesus lived. Therefore, much, much later, two to three hundred years after Jesus lived. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Hold on, we need to get to that. Can you then understand why we're bringing this up? Can you then understand why we're confronting Muslims? Because the claims they have made, they can no longer support. And these have been claims that have been going on for 1,400 years. It's only in the last month and a half that Muslims have finally admitted that there are many different Qurans, up to 30 of them. And they, as we're going to find out, do not come from the 7th century at all. Well, this has been good chatting with you. I'll be back again with another video on the Kirat and the Ahruf. This is Jaden, over now.